wrestling fans, we are back here at ringside at the fairgrounds in Nashville, Tennessee. We are witnessing an outstanding tag match between Tojo Yamamoto, Jerry Lawler against the Sherman Tanks, Phil Hickerson and Al Green. And Sam Bass now enters the ring as Jerry Lawler intercepts Sam Bass, drops him with a hard right hand punch, goes back to Phil Hickerson, picks the big man up, slams him and slams him hard to the canvas. As Phil Hickerson has been cut and bleeding, Jerry Lawler now attempting a bombs away from the top rope, missed the attack, missed Phil Hickerson, and Sam Bass has thrown a cowboy boot into the ring as Phil Hickerson bangs away at the forehead of Jerry Lawler. This is the third and final fall of a wild tag team match. I have next to me another outstanding wrestler, Jerry Barber. Jerry, this has been some kind of a match. It sure has. It's been a pure six ball from start to finish, Lynn. And this thing is not over yet, and we still have a lot of action going into the ring. We have Phil Hickerson bleeding from the head profusely. Phil Hickerson and Sam Bass are using that cowboy boot on the head of Jerry Lawler, and I'm afraid they're gonna bust his head there with that boot if the referee doesn't stop this match or something isn't done. Wrestling fans, these men, these four men have had a feud going between them now. It has come to a head, and Phil Hickerson shooting some hard right-hand punches into the forehead of Jerry Lawler. Lawler appears to have been cut over the left eye. Hickerson now working Lawler over in the corner as Tojo Yamamoto also working big Al Green over in the opposite side of the ring. Excuse me, Lynn, but they do have Jerry Lawler is bleeding from the head itself down there, and Phil Hickerson is still bleeding profusion. Now, like I say, blood is coming from Jerry Lawler, and Sam Bash is trying to get into the ring again. Many of the wrestlers also are interested in this match. Many of them are watching from behind back at the building, and Phil Hickerson now has decked Jerry Lawler, and I mean decked him hard. Lawler down now on his back. Hickerson continues a dish out punishment. Lawler and Tojo both in trouble at this point as their opponents continue to work them over. Big Hickerson sends a boot into the midsection of Lawler, drops him once again to the canvas, picks Jerry Lawler up, shoots him into the ropes, and Hickerson misses the big elbow. Lawler off with a drop kick. Two, three. That is the pin. Jerry Lawler has pinned Big Phil Hickerson. Lawler and Tojo officially have won the match, but Sam Bass now, the manager, is in the ring working to Tojo over. Al Green and Phil Hickerson both ganging Jerry Lawler, banging away. And Jerry Barber, this appears to have gotten out of hand. It sure has. It's a pure six brawl now. Even though their winner has been decided in the match, that does not mean the action is over, Lynn Rossi, because these guys are still going at it hot and heavy, as all you fans can see. Sam Bass working. Tojo Yamamoto over with that cowboy boot. Phil Hedden and Al Green are working over Jerry Lawler, who is bleeding from the head, and also Phil Hickerson is bleeding from the head. You know, to win this match, Jerry Lawler outsmarted Phil Hickerson, Lynn. He sure did. He made a smart move there. But Green and Hickerson now, along with Sam Bass, continue, and I mean continue to dish punishment out on Tojo and Jerry Lawler. The fans around ringside are really upset, really disturbed. Tommy Marlin, the referee, is attempting to pull Big Al Green off. Has no success, the match completely out of hand. A lot of animosity between these four men. In case some of you fans didn't know, Sam Bass is the former manager of Jerry Lawler. They have had a disagreement and now are on opposite sides. Tojo now knocked out of the ring. Lawler and Tojo out on the floor. Referee Tommy Marlin does award the match to Jerry Lawler and Tojo Yamamoto. This has been a wild match. The first two falls were split. 
with one fall apiece. We picked up the action in the latter part of the third fall. Jerry Lawler did outsmart his opponent. That was the official decision. The winner of the match, Jerry Lawler and Tojo Yamamoto. Jerry Barber, we just have a few seconds here left. What kind of match? I mean, I think it was wild and rough. You know, I think that's one of the roughest matches we've had here in Nashville, Tennessee at the fairgrounds in quite some time, Lynn. Uh, if the wrestling fans came tonight to see a lot of action, they certainly got to see it here at the fairgrounds. Thanks a lot for your comments, Jerry Barber. This is Len Rossi at ringside in Nashville, Tennessee at the new Fairgrounds Wrestling Arena, and we'll be back with more wrestling action after a brief pause. And Jerry Lawler is in trouble, no question about that. He's been in trouble several times in this match. He's had Sam Bass on the ropes a time or two, but right now, through the combined efforts of all three men, Jerry Lawler is definitely in trouble. Count Drummer working on him, puts him off the ropes, comes back, a back body drop high and on the mat goes Jerry Lawler as the Count continues to work him over. Made a motion that time, he wants him to set up the old knee and into that knee of Sam Bass goes Jerry Lawler. The Count is being, no, I thought he was coming out, but he's still in there. Duke Myers right there with him. The Duke is going to take over now as Count Drummer goes out. Lawler has not uh, been able to make a tag. He'd like to get Sam Bass in there again. He's had two or three shots at him, as you know, so far. But not the big one that he wants, where he can really set him up for the kill. And now Sam Bass is coming in to work on an almost helpless Jerry Lawler, and he'll relish that thought. This is the only way he wants any part of Lawler, when Lawler is almost helpless. Like, oh, Lawler's not helpless yet. He's going to go after Sam Bass, but look at that. Right away, Duke Meyer interferes. And that has been one of the big troubles of this match. Every time Lawler has an opportunity to get his hands on Sam Bass, either Myers or Count Drummer seems to be right there to interrupt things. He has got several good pops at uh, Bass. Look at that. But he hasn't got that big one he wants. He hasn't really got uh, had an opportunity to pour it to Sam Bass yet. And that's what he wants. Off the ropes. Lawler's ready for him with that elbow. Right on top of him, drives it home. Duke Myers comes in, Marlin comes in, Tojo comes in, what happened? Lawler's in there now, and right beside him is, whoa, look at this. Whoa, he kicked him. He kicked him, and Lawler is on top of Count Drummer, and that's the win and the match. Lawler is working on Sam Bass. Look at that. He's got Sam down on the floor now, and boy, he is pouring it to him. Sam Bass is helpless. Tojo standing by, Eddie Marlin standing by, and Jerry Lawler has Sam Bass flat on the mat, and he is pouring it to him with that big right fist. Marlin and Tojo standing by in case Meyer and the Count Drummer tried to come back in the ring to rescue Bass. Tojo's ready, so is Marlin. They're pulling, Marlin's trying to pull Lawler off. He doesn't want him to beat the man to death here. He's just sitting on top of Sam Bass, pounding away with that right hand. Blood coming from Sam Bass's face. Lawler pinned Count Drummer, I believe it was, for the actual fall and the win. And then he went right after. Look at that. He knocked Eddie Marlin down. <coughs> Marlin was trying to pull him away. But Sam, but uh, Lawler would not be pulled away. He knows Marlin's his friend, but he doesn't want to be bothered right now at this time because this is the moment that he's been waiting for to get Sam Bass right in that ring, and he's got him there, and he has really worked him over in the last two or three minutes. Tojo is in there now, and he's putting the pressure on Count Drummer. Count hit him right in top of the head and knocked him down. Now they have pulled Bass out of the ring, bleeding. He's heading toward the dressing room. Boy, he's bleeding, too. Make no mistake about that. Blood coming out of his face, off his head, as he goes toward the dressing room, held up by Drummer and by his two partners. He's coming over here now. I want that jerk right there. I want him in a chain match here, Thornton. I want him chained to me in that ring. I will kill him. 
I want that chain strapped on his wrist and my wrist, just me and him, Harry Thornton. You, just me and him in a chain match. match. That's right, just me and him in a chain match. Nick Gullis over here. Nick, I'll talk to Nick Gullis about it. He'll have to make the booking fee, actually, the actual booking Arrangement must be made by Nick, but we'll report that to him. We'll do our best to give Sam Bass a crack at Jerry Lawler in a chain match if that's what he wants. That's the way it ended, fans. Jerry Lawler and his team, the winner, Tojo and Eddie Marlin, as Jerry Lawler pinned Count Drummer for the final fall and then really gave Sam Bass a going over. And that's it from the auditorium. being dropped hard on that spine. The stomper goes for the cover. One, two, and all are shakes him. 11,500 people come to their feet as Lawler threw off the heavier stomper and broke the count at one and a half. Once again, Lawler slammed hard into the turnbuckle. Ripped with a right hand from Tamujin. The Southern heavyweight title at stake. A capacity crowd gathered. As they have seen, Jerry Lawler reverse it just then. Tamujin came firing into the corner. Lawler raised up, caught him with both feet. And from the ropes, comes down and rips him across the face with that top arm. Dropping on him with the elbow. The referee stops the count as the Mongolian stomper was under the ropes. And Bearcat Wright, the stomper's manager, around to the edge of the ring to talk to him. While it is at a no disqualification, no time limit bout, it is possible for a wrestler to be counted out if he refuses to make contact and wrestle or return to the ring, this is not a disqualification, but a count out. And the crowd loving it is King Jerry Lawler. Rips ahead of the stomper open. It looks like he has a severe cut on his left eye. And Lawler just continues to maul him with that big right hand. The stomper climbs through the ropes and wish he hadn't. Lawler meets him with a stunning right hand. Lawler now going to boxing as the stomper completely rubber legged. And the championship may be well within his grasp. He can't put the big boy down. 271 pounds of man and muscle is the Mongolian stomper. Lawler takes a right hand, and once again, the stomper turns back against Lawler. Here's Bearcat Wright, who left the ring, is now back up to the edge of the ring again, as he came back just in time to see Lawler put the stomper over in the corner. And the crowd loving every minute of it, but Jerry Lawler cannot get the Mongolian stomper off his feet. Referee Paul Morton pushing Lawler back. And Lawler now determined to go after him, moves in and the stomper catches him. Right smack in the face with a foot. The count of three. And in a sudden lightning-like turn of events, the stomper with 
the assistance of Bearcat Wright talking to him in the corner caught Lawler as he roared back into the corner and Lawler apparently telling the stomper rather telling the referee that the stomper and the crowd agreeing with him that the stomper had something in his boot. Lawler who had been kicked on previous occasions by the stomper was really throttled when the stomper put him down this time. Sufficient for the stopper to get a three count. And young Jerry Lawler once again loses his bid to regain the NWA Southern Heavyweight title. As he continues to argue with the referee, Bearcat Wright, who had an able assist in this bout tonight, has led his champion back to the dressing room. This is Lance Russell from a jam-packed Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. Jerry Jerk. Let's go fly to Sam Bass. Look at that fans, Jerry Jerk. Letting loose. A fist of the shit of Don Kim. Jerry Jerk takes one of the stomach. It looks like, it looks like Jerry Lawler. Just swing it, yep. Jerry Lawler got Jerry Jarrett right in the throat. That had to hurt. Jerry Lawler snakes his elbow right into that ring. Jerry Jarrett flips the over. Look at that. Jerry Jarrett lands right on his knee. Tries to get over to tag out the Tojo. Did he make it? Did he make it? He made it. Referee says he made it. Tojo Yamamoto in the match right now. Tojo Yamamoto, Don Kent. Tojo, man, what's that 5,000 bucks? Both wrestlers in a ring right now. Sam Bass shouting the words of encouragement. Tojo Yamamoto to the judo shot to Sam Bass. Flip smaller into the ropes. Smack right to the side of the head. Jerry Lawler, there the ring. Tojo, Tojo has Jerry Lawler pinned. Referee starts to count. One, two, three. That's it, Tyler. That's it. There you have it. Jerry Jarrett, Tojo Yamamoto with the fall of the match. And $5,000. Jerry Jarrett, Tojo Yamamoto. Two happy people walking away tonight with $5,000 and big bonus bucks. Jerry Lawler and Don Kent protesting with an old ale. The referee says, $5,000. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry Jarrett, Tojo Yamamoto, $5,000. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, fans. Wait a minute. What's going on? The referee, the referee is they're telling Jerry Jarrett something. And Jerry Jarrett and Tojo Yamamoto are going back in the ring. Well, wait a minute now. To my vantage point, I'm really not sure what's going on. Jerry Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, I mean, had the microphone and was shouting something to the crowd. But there was so much crowd noise, I couldn't hear what was going on. Jerry Jarrett does have that check for $5,000. The referee gave it to him. There's some protest. I don't understand exactly why, but Jerry Jarrett enters the ring again. I just been told what happened, fans. Tojo pinned the wrong man. Tojo pinned the wrong man. That's what happened. Tojo pinned the wrong man. This match is not over yet. This match is not over. Tojo pinned the wrong man. Don Kent choking Tojo. It looks like with some object. Looks like it may be a chain. Jerry Jarrett with a shoe for Tojo Yamamoto. This match is not over yet, fans. A $5,000 winner has not been declared. Tojo Yamamoto in a lot of trouble, getting choked, getting pounded with a fist. Jerry Jarrett in with a shoe. Jerry Lawler to the top of the head with one of Tojo's wooden shoes. Referee orders Jerry Jarrett out of the ring. Tojo had pinned the wrong man. No, Joe had pinned the wrong man. That's what happened. Therefore, there was not a, a winner in this match. That's why the referee ordered the wrestlers back in the ring. The wrong man was pinned. A shoe across to Tojo Yamamoto. Tojo 
Pitt John Kennel, the top of the hill of the shoe, and Sherry Lawler. Sam Bass up on the ring apron right now. Tojo administering the punishment. John Kennel and Jerry Lawler with that wooden shoe. The referee trying to get some sort of order here. That's next to impossible to do. Lawler comes into the ring. Sam Bass rushing the crowd's delight, takes the shoe to the head. Tojo continues to administer the punishment to Don Kent and Sherry Lawler. This is turning into a free-for-all here in Louisville for $5,000. Jerry Sheriff and Sam Bass going at it. Tojo Yamamoto continues to pound Don Kent on the top of the head of that wooden shoe. Jerry Sheriff continues to pound as Sam Bass. Jerry Lawler on top of the way, look out. Jerry Lawler. With that big, heavy Texas boot of Sam Bass. Gets Tojo in the back of the head. Lawler calls this referee to count one, two, three. That is it. That is it, fans. Don Kent, Tim Tojo, Yellow Rojo, and Jerry Lawler right there is holding a check for $5,000. Jerry Lawler wins 5,000 big ones here in Louisville, Kentucky before a capacity crowd. Jerry Lawler off the top rope with that boot in the back of the head of Tojo Yamamoto. Jerry Jarrett was also the recipient of one of those boots in the back of the head. Both wrestlers are out. Jerry Lawler with his $5,000 check. He's a mighty happy fellow. What a match this has been. There was some confusion there because Tojo Yamamoto had pinned the wrong man. That's what happened. The crowd was on his feet. The my particular vantage point a little hard to see. But now we understand what was going on when Tojo pinned the wrong man. Of course, the match was not over. But Tojo was pinned, so the, the match is over. $5,000. Lawler. I tell you, I'm not trying to knock him down. I think he's a, a good wrestler. But I tell you, there's just something about him that makes me hot. I could play a whole football game, probably lose my temper, get hit or get hurt, and not get half as hot as I do in one minute with this guy. You still know about him. There is something about the guy that uh, makes you react that way. He's uh, somebody. <laughs> He finally goes back to the dressing room. Ron Mikolajic. Oh, he got rich. Put that head into the top turnbuckle. Waller. Working on the midsection. Uh, Tommy Rich. That midsection still somewhat sore. Thanks to a bad burn created by Mr. Lawler some weeks ago. Lawler puts Rich's head into the turnbuckle. Uh, Rich almost flipped right over the rope. Bounce back into the ring. Waller picks him up by the hair. Now, Waller's got him in the air. Driving body slam over near the corner. Waller again with a body slam on Tommy Rich. Waller up on the middle rope. Oh, that headbutt off the rope. Waller went up on the ropes again. Uh, oh, he missed it. Rich moved out of the way. And Jerry Lawler's head slammed right into the mat. Rich with a right hand pops Lawler in the top of the head. Tommy Rich fighting back. Things were going his way in the early part of the match. Lawler went to work on him. And here he goes. Tommy Rich, Jerry Lawler down on the mat. Cover by.
by Tommy. One. One and a half is all he can get. Into the turnbuckles goes Jerry Lawler. Rich in there after it. Puts him into the turnbuckles across the ring. Oh, it came in too quick. Lawler kicked him back. Referee's down. Some kind of powder. I don't know what that is. But Lawler has just thrown it at Tommy Rich's eyes. Pointed the elbow across the throat. There's a cover. Referee counts one, two, three. That's it. The referee was knocked down, too. Sam Bass in the ring with Jerry Lawler. They're calling for the belt. Sam's coming after it. Referee Tommy Mullen hands the belt to Lawler. And Jerry Lawler is in possession of the NWA Southern Heavyweight Championship belt. Rich from behind it, puts it. Goes after Bass. Who can blame him after what they did to him up there? Rich going after all of them. He's choking Sam now. Uh-oh, look out. Here comes Paul Boy Frazier, the big guy. He grabs Rich from behind. Cowboy's got his rings on. He's popping Tommy Rich right at the top of the head, wearing all those rings that Lawler gave him a few weeks ago. Cowboy Frazier. Tommy Rich up there on the ropes. Referee Tommy Marlin trying to get order restored. Here comes Ron Mikolajic in. Mikolajic after Lawler and the Plowboy. Rich goes after Bass. Mikolajic after Sam Bass. Tommy Rich grabbing Sam. Nikolajic goes after the plowboy. Lawler down on the mat. And Tommy Rich and Ron Nikolajic are ripping Sam Bass's clothes. Three for all here. Yeah, we're trying, Tommy. Referee Tommy Marlin calling for the bell. We've been ringing it, but it's not doing any good. And he just ripped Sam's shirt off. Nikolajic ripping all of Sam's clothes off. Come on. Sam Bass heads for the dressing room, minus most of his clothes. Counters with Jerry Lawler, so it should be some whale of a match. Once again, Bearcat and Bill Costello, the spoiler and Buddy Wayne, Tojo Yamamoto and Tommy Gilbert. Uh, it'll be Don and Al Green against Pappas and Don Anderson. Kirby and Schultz challenging for the tag title with John and Dundee holding it. And then it'll be Lawler and Plowboy Frazier with Bass in the corner going against Mikolajic. Tommy Rich with Jerry Jarrett in the corner. That's the action Monday night at the car. Plowboy Frazier out here. <laughs> Lost one last Monday night, didn't you, Mr. Lawler? I want to say something about that, but before we go any further, I want to make this special announcement. Contrary to popular belief, Memphis did not have an earthquake this past week. Oh. My man Lance Russell was driving his car across the Memphis, Arkansas Bridge, stuck his nose out the window, and his nose was hitting up and down them guardrails, and that's the tremor you people felt. The aftershock was the wind caught in his nose, turned the car around, did the same thing, coming back again. Isn't that right, Lance? Tell the truth. Oh, yeah, I'll tell the truth. Now, before we go any further, I heard what you say. You lost one last Monday night. Mm -hmm, I heard you say that. Right. Okay, well, wait just a second here. Let's, let's get the record straight. Now, I want you to answer these questions, nothing but the facts. Were you at the Mid-South Coliseum last night?
Sitting right down there at ringside. Did you, Lance Russell, witness the match in which Plowboy Frazier and myself wrestled Ron Mikulowczyk and Tommy Rich? I did, in fact, yes, every minute of it. Do you know the outcome of that match? I am certainly aware of the outcome of that. At match. any time during that match, did you see either my shoulders or the Plowboy's shoulders counted down and pinned to the mat for a count of three? Well, no, not on a pin. All I want is the answers, baby. No. At any time during that match, did you see Ron Mikulowczyk's shoulders counted down for the count of three? Yeah, I saw I rest my case. Eat your heart out, Perry Mason. <laughs> the verdict is in. You're the losers, Mikulowczyk and Rich, and the Plowboy and myself are the winners. That's all it is. It's as simple as that. They can't come out here and claim a victory. He was counted out. We're the winners, and they're the losers. Now, I want to say a few things. I heard the conversation that went on out here just a few minutes ago. I know the question that's on your lips and in the minds of all the rednecks out there. You're asking yourself right now, how does the king really do it? How does he keep on winning? How does he stay on top? Well, I'm going to answer that question, people. And the answer to that question is because I'm smart. Not only, not only do I possess the best trained, highly developed fighting machine for a body, incapable of being hurt, able to withstand any punishment whatsoever. Not only do I possess that for a body, but I also possess the sharpest mind in the sport of professional wrestling today. That's why I'm always a winner. That's why I am the greatest, because I am the smartest. Now, I want you people to write that down in your little books, and remember that if the question ever arises again, you can turn to the page, whatever you put it on, and you'll read it, Lawler's smartest. That's why he's the winner. It's a simple fact. If you compare me, if you compare me with some of these other wrestlers around here, it's like night and day. Just, just take, for instance, just run down the match. Run down the match for Monday night. Tommy Rich. Tommy Rich, you know what he is, Sam? He's a 19-year-old dropout from the school for the mentally deficient. Do you realize, Lance Russell, that when I was in the Mid-South Coliseum wrestling Jack Briscoe for the heavyweight championship of the world, that punk's teacher was having him stay after school for pulling some little girl's pigtails. And then you talk about R Ron Mikulowczyk, semi-retarded Polak football player. He needs a coach to tell him when to go to the John. You think he's got any brains? Not, a, not that much, baby. And then this other jerk, the fair-haired wonder boy, Jerry Jarrett. I saw him coming out here. You want to match wits with me, you need to go pal around with a half-wit so you have somebody to look up to, Jarrett. You ain't never seen the day you could match wits with me. I will admit that I did give you a little credit for being about halfway smart one time because you had the brains to realize that you don't have the wrestling ability to stay in the ring, so you got you a little pencil and started pushing it and started writing down wrestlers' names instead of trying to match them in the ring. Well, now you've come back in the ring, so you've proven that you don't have the brains I gave you credit for. And that just about covers all of them. None of them can ca compare with me in, in knowledge. And as far as you redneck idiots out there, it goes for you too. You've proven how ignorant you are because you're looking right now at the greatest team to come down the pikes and slice bread, baby. And you people are too stupid to appreciate it. You don't realize what true talent and true wrestling ability really is. You're looking at it right now, and I want you jerks out there to realize it. And that's about all I got to say, other than the fact that after Monday night, they won't be out here running their foolish mouth because they'll be too ashamed to be seen on this television. I see. Well, it'll be an interesting thing to see the fact that uh, when a team like Rich and Mikulajic has somebody in there with the experience and the ability, because he won an awful lot of mally, <laughs> no, uh, matches on his own knowledge. Spit and, it out, Buzzer Beak. Uh, all right. Uh, he won a lot of matches. Big deal. He was wrestling idiots. You're wrestling. You're going to be out there Monday night with the brain, baby. 
you're looking at the brain and you don't even you're not even in the same category That's the king the giant and myself are going over jonesboro and whip everything that moves tonight baby jonesboro arkansas another tornado baby is fixing to hit you're looking at it we're going to be in jackson tennessee and tupelo mississippi this week. also i want to tell all them spirit truckers to get out of mississippi well, there they are. I've heard him referred to as the mouth before, but never the brain that he just referred to himself. And uh, Lawler with his non-stop long playing tongue spitting out on Lawler hanging back close to his corner. Lawler got a caught by surprise there by the bull put on him by Rosie Jones. Referee Bill Mack talking to Rosie Jones. Lawler complained. I don't know if he had his tights pulled, his hair pulled, something. Lawler with a headlock. Jones popped out of it and converted, I think, to a standing wrist lock. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see. Because between the action and the table over here is 460 pounds of Plowboy Frazier. There is Jerry Lawler on the mat. Rosie Jones with that left arm barred. On the rope, Lawler with a forearm. Rosie Jones popped him. Jerry Lawler down to the mat. Lawler yanked his hair. He's got Betty in uh, head scissors, but not for long. Betty quickly back up on his feet. Two minute mark gone. A one full ten minute time limit night. Jerry Lawler over to the corner. Small conference with Plowboy Frazier. Plowboy in there now after the tag against Wayne Petty. Petty able to get the tag on Rosie Jones. Plowboy said Jones. Coming off of there. Backs him off. Frazier to the corner and made the tag on Jerry Lawler. Lawler comes in. He takes over where Frazier left off on Rosie Jones. Picks him up. Body slam. Tag made, and here comes the plowboy. He sat down right on his head. Tag made, it is Lawler coming back. Lawler on the middle rope, drops down to the elbow, cover, one, hey, and a count of one and a half, little help from Wayne Petty from outside. Jones trying to get the tag, not quite, not quite. About three inches away from the tag on Petty. Lawler caught his arm. Plowboy's back in there now. Frazier 
Frazier. Back to the corner, it tags Jerry Lawler. Rosie Jones, fighting back. Put the headbutt on uh, Lawler. Back to the corner, and he gets the tag on Wayne Petty. Petty picking Lawler up. Little half spin and a body slam. Cover by Wayne Petty. Count of one, about all he can get. Petty trying to put Lawler down in a jackknife and hold him there. He could not hold him there, though. Five and a half minutes gone in the match. That leaves four and a half minutes wrestling time in that 10-minute time limit. Oh, Frazier from outside. He really unloaded on Wayne Petty after the tag. Bobby Rich in here. Ron Nicolaitis, Jerry Jarrett. Bobby Rich, I think it was a sack of flowers. He had to win. They came roaring into the ring. Jarrett, Nicolaitis, and Tommy Rich. All came roaring into the ring here. Rich had a, it had to been a sack of flour. He don't operate too much with his mind, Cloud, it does it. Our team, uh, the greatest brain in wrestling, he said. Well, I guess, uh, I didn't really understand what uh, Bill Mack had to say. I think he has probably awarded the match to Lawler and, uh, and Frazier for outside interference. I don't know. He may have just stopped the whole thing. Yeah, his gesture looked like he was stopping just it. Stopping I didn't catch thing, it. It yeah. looked like he just stopped the match on the thing. But in any event, it is rather anticlimactic. When you look at Lawler, now there he is. That's what he ought to be. He ought to have that clown's makeup on him. Look at Plowboy, covered with that hair, all seven feet or six nine or whatever he is. And Sam Bass. Oh, I wish I had a permanent picture of that for my photo album. Marvelous. There goes Lawler out. Plowboy hits the floor. Mm. We're going to see if we can do a little repair work in here, if we can find a broom somewhere. But <laughs> there goes Sam out. Sam was covered with it. I'm not too happy about the mission at the sea yet. Yeah, it is, uh, it is full of it in there. Uh, uh, uh. Into the ring, Rich and Jarrett and uh, Ron Mikolajczyk came in, and they did a little mind-clouding routine for a fact with a sack of flour as they nailed Lawler and Sam Bass and big plowboy Frazier. So we're going to take time out to do a little repair. Do with wrestling, and I'm going to tell you something, Punk Jerry Jarrett. I know you're behind this, boy, because those other two idiots ain't got the brains to think of a trick like this. I know you have the brains behind this. Now, you ain't going to sit in no corner. I'm going to tell you, where's the... Mr. Coffee, go get Mr. Coffee. You talking about being down there Monday night, punk. Well, you bring you a pair of tights, because you ain't going to sit in the corner. You're going to pay for this, so you get in there and get you a little bit of the king. You come out here and run your mouth about it. Come here. That punk's supposed to be sitting in the corner. Look at Sam Bass and look at the plowboy here, and look at this. You call this wrestling, you're supposed to be a commissioner around here. You go tell that punk to bring him some tights down there Monday night because he's gonna be in the ring. I'm talking about that punk Jerry Jarrett. Go tell him right now he's gonna be in there. Right. It's gonna be a six-man tag. I'm telling you, do you hear that? You go tell him right now. It'll have to be with his approval. No, it don't. It don't. Come it's on, I'm it's making it's it his approval. You, do it. Go you think he's gonna do that? Way. Look at this! You think he's gonna do this and get away with this? I know what goes on in that perverted mind of his. He thinks this is funny, Lance Russell. Well, I guess you I'll sit back funny? here and smirk, Dave Brown. Come on now, Sam. I'm going to tell you something, punk. I don't I'm care for it. I'm, I'm getting it on my head. Jared, Jared. When you get down there Monday night, you're going to pay for this because don't nobody do this to me and get away with it. Look at this Look at my face. This is ridiculous. Jerry, Jerry, 
Jerry Jarrett said, you're not near as smart as you think you are. You fell right into his trap, so he'll be there with his tights on. It'll be a six-man. He said, you weren't as smart as you thought you were. I got news for you, punk. You're going to see just exactly how smart I am, baby. You're going to see Monday night. You're going to pay for this. No, no matter so proud. That sucks on me, girl. that stretch he's trying to bring up from the right shoulder to put that strain across from the right shoulder down to the left leg there he goes Lawler couldn't get it all the way up a big pole of an arm he's trying to work on Sam Sam Bass giving advice to Lawler on how to go about getting 290 pound Mikolajczyk in a submission position. Waller in his usual bravado manner, hollering at the crowd. Mikolajczyk has not been able to fathom how to come out of this one, but this is a hole that fools a lot of even veteran wrestlers. Once again, gigging Mikolajczyk about the fact that he's a football player and no wrestler. He keeps hollering, what's the matter, a football player? Mikolajczyk has, has never made nothing illegal about what Lawler was doing at that point. Mikolajczyk has never made any brag that he is a superior scientific wrestler to Lawler because Lawler, although he's young, has certainly picked up and developed into one of the nation's top wrestlers, consistently ranked as one of the top challengers in the country. Ten minutes passed, 50 minutes to wrestle in this championship match. And again, to remind you, the stipulation being that if either wrestler violates the rules, the referee can call a halt right at that point and award the bout to the other wrestler. Mikolajczyk must be tiring, but by the same token, Lawler is being, ha having to put his body under a strain to stay with this big, big guy. Once again, the Mick is up in upright position and Lawler having a very difficult time holding on. Takes him back down to the canvas. He was fortunate that the referee was on the wrong side. Had the referee caught him in a violation of the rule, it could have been all over with, and that would have been it for the bout. Shakes it loose, and now tries to unleash some of those kinks. Good broad arm, but Mikolajczyk has not regained his full stability. He's a little wobbly from the strain that he's been under. Once again, pure, unadulterated strength. Knocks Lawler straight back on the canvas. Ron moves into position, waiting for him to turn around. And as he comes off the rope, Lawler nails him with the upper arm. Nothing is Him as Lawler came down to massage his head with that arm, Mikolajczyk was going to go for a backdrop, but Lawler just much too quick. There's a count. One, two, three, and that's going to be it. In 14 minutes and eight seconds, the winner with a pin 
is Jerry Lawler retaining his Southern heavyweight title. Mikolajczyk gave it a game effort, but just too much savvy and know-how from Jerry Lawler, who again uses his wrestling skills and that wily cunningness of his to come through with a victory. This is Lance Russell from the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. I'm Jerry Lawler, the king of Memphis. Some people know me as bad news, but to my opponents, I'm poison. And I know there's no antidote for me, but old Banana Nose here has the answer for any other poison you might get a hold of. You know, poisonous household chemicals, plants, or insects can cause injury or death. For immediate antidote information, you be sure and call 522-3030 24 hours a day. Ten seconds could save your child, your pet, or you. Now well, look, Jerry, give me an opportunity no, to no, say... No. No defense of the Wimbledon Tennis Championship today, but taking nearly three hours to beat fellow American Ferdy Tagan of Massachusetts. Other winners included today uh, Dick Stockton, Charlie Passarell, Guillermo Vilas, John Newcomb, Tom Ocker, and Adriano Panetta. Jerry Page, who won the U.S. Open. Jerry Lawler, the National Wrestling Alliance Southern Heavyweight Champion, and Rocky Johnson, a well-ranked boxer and former sparring partner of George Foreman, will meet at the Coliseum tonight in the Wrestling Cards main event. The match will be contested under a specially created set of rules involving both boxing and wrestling. WHBQ Stu Robb helped conduct a preliminary weigh-in this afternoon here at WHBQ. Lawler tipped the scales at 225 and a half pounds, and Johnson weighed in at 247 pounds. There will be 15 three-minute rounds with a one-minute rest period between rounds. Johnson will be boxing wearing eight-ounce gloves, while Lawler will wrestle wearing no gloves. And from the conversation with the two con t uh, contestants in our studio today, both felt confident of victory tonight. Have you made any special preparations for this match or bout? Well, yeah, I've been working over some wrestlers and letting them grab on me because he's going to be trying to catch me. And I realize he's a wrestler. If he takes me off my feet, I'm going to be in trouble. But uh, I think I'm bigger than he is. I'm stronger than he is. And I know one thing. I can hit harder than he can. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Do you, uh, do you think it's going to go 15 rounds? There ain't no way in the world because I don't think he can last 15 rounds. He's lucky if he lasts five. I'll make a prediction. I'll say five or six rounds because I'm going to play with him for three or four. Then I'm going to feel him out in five and knock him out in six. Jerry, this will be your first outing against the boxer. Are you taking this fight seriously? Just as serious as a heart attack, Charlie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove a point once and for all. The question's been going around a long time. Who could win between a boxer and a wrestler? I'm going to make everybody realize that there's no athlete in the world that can compare with a wrestler. How active have you been the past couple of weeks? I've had several matches this past couple of weeks and uh, also training for the match. And, and uh, I'm just looking forward to it because I heard that Johnson's been shooting his mouth off a lot, and I'm going to shut him up tonight. Johnson has been quite successful as a boxer, and he can punch. But can Jerry Lawler take a punch? <laughs> I can take a punch with the best of them. I take bare fist punch, and it's going to be it's going to be easy for me to have a little padding around it for a change, Charlie. Take your pick. That's tonight at the Coliseum. I'll have more sports tonight. Well, here it is, the final one on this olden golden championship wrestling program. Jerry the King Lawler challenging for the Southern heavyweight title from Jack Briscoe. Lawler and Briscoe had many, many bouts that you could remember. One of them a 60-minute draw for the world heavyweight title, but none of them more exciting than when Jerry Lawler challenged Jack Briscoe for the Southern heavyweight crown. Let's watch it.
Jack working in on him. Waller goes for the ring rope, and he is kicked out of it. Hit himself on the ring apron on those ribs that Frisco had already bruised. Waller in pain on the floor. Frisco had softened those ribs up. He kicked him out. Lawler hit his ribs on the ring apron. Hops back to that same apron right now and back into the ring. Jack looking very confident across the ring. Has his win back. Lawler has not. But you never know about Lawler, whether he's sandbagging you or not. He's still rubbing those ribs. Briscoe cautiously now. Goes to the corner, slaps Lawler back. Trying to get him to come out. Lawler now. This is the Lawler that everybody here knows. He comes out signifying he's ready for a fight. Briscoe, a southpaw, shoots a couple of rights to the midsection. Right on the butt. He got him. Frisco needs to go for the pin instead of taunting Lawler. Lawler goes to the ropes as Frisco had locked up. Looked like Frisco was going into the Indian death lock. Lawler wheeled over to the ropes and falls down to the Coliseum floor as Jack Briscoe. Maintains his total poise in that ring. Jerry Lawler. Hammered in, it was a move similar to that that Briscoe capitalized and moved into a title victory over Jerry Lawler. Oh, he ripped his head. Pounded Lawler's head right down to the mat. Briscoe over the shoulder. There goes Jack again. At the 15 minute mark. with that leg hook. Puts the heat on. He has lost. You can see Lawler's leg right over his own leg, the ankle, and Frisco with tremendous pressure in there. Frisco, of course, famous for that figure four clutch. Doesn't have his own foot hooked, but he has Lawler in total misery. And Lawler now reverts it as he cuts Briscoe's foot back up. And Jack to the rope is going to get a break out of this one. Jack Briscoe, who had Lawler's leg in a real substantial bar, had it suddenly reversed on him as Lawler put the heat on Briscoe's left leg. And now, both of them suffering from the rigors of 16 and a half minutes of grueling battle. Lawler tenderly and gingerly moving on that left leg. Crisco grabs it, picks him up, drops him on it, and there he goes. Whoa! Jerry Lawler really booted Frisco into the turnbuckle. Jack hit his shoulder, and he may be in bad, bad shape. Got him, Jerry Lawler. Turned the tide when he kicked Frisco into the turnbuckles. Lawler falling to the mat. Can hardly stand on that left leg. Jack Frisco has got to be having his second thoughts about ever, even for the money, giving Lawler a return shot. As Jerry Lawler has won back his Southern heavyweight title 
in a defeat of Jack Frisco in 17 minutes, 56 seconds, Jerry Lawler has defeated the former world heavyweight champion and now no one can deny him that bid for Terry Funk's world title. This is Lance Russell from the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. And Jerry Lawler, the winner of that Southern heavyweight crown. We're going to be back with a final word in just a moment. Settle it with uh, Conry right at the moment. Hickerson decides to try out the stairway there as Johnson comes toward the corner. He wants somebody in the middle of the ring. Big Rocky Johnson out of Houston, Texas. Quite a specimen. He's looking for a tag, and he didn't find anything but air. All of a sudden, Condry and Hickerson decided to go visit the other corners of the ring and see what was happening right down there. First end of the rope by Bill Dundee, and Condry kicks Dundee off. Count of two, really didn't quite ever get to a two. Lawler tipped Dundee over backwards, and Dundee caught him with a foot right in the midsection. And now Hickerson takes the front of Dundee's action. A big elbow to Condry. The superstar whips Hickerson into the rope. Backdrop. his way in after Johnson, but thinks better of it and comes back out. Dundee and Hickerson. <laughs> Rocky Johnson lays Hickerson right in the eye. Dundee awaiting Dennis Condry. hit the seven minute mark in this action of this six man tag match with Yamamoto, Dundee and Johnson against Hickerson, Andre and Lawler. Look at that. Tojo's hot. Lawler caught between Yamamoto and Johnson. Dundee, after having had his head open by the combined work of uh, Condry, Hickerson, and Lawler, in the center of the ring, being worked on by Lawler, referee Jerry Calhoun, continuing to try to bring a little order, but it's almost hopeless as this has been a real wild and woolly one. Lawler off that top rope, drops straight down on Dundee. Two, and Johnson kicks him off. Tag on Hickerson. Dundee's still in there. Needs to get out in the worst way right now. He's got two relatively fresh when he goes for Yamamoto. And here comes Kojo. Kojo with a swing and chop. Puts Conry, Hickerson, and Lawler down. From behind, Lawler nails him, and Hickerson takes him in the corner. Rocky Johnson comes to help him out. The referee trying to keep Johnson and Condry apart. Condry kicks Dundee off the ring apron. And back in the right-hand corner, it's Tojo being really worked over by Hickerson and Lawler. Ooh. Hickerson rattles him. Hickerson continuing to work on Tojo Yamamoto. 
At the 15 minute mark, 45 minutes to go. Cojo with a right hand while Hickerson holds him. Yamamoto still under attack from Condry, Hickerson, and Lawler as Dennis caught from behind by Dundee, who stopped the assault on Tojo for the moment, but only for a moment as Hickerson grabbed from outside the ropes. Tojo now bleeding. They had Dundee bleeding a little earlier. Ooh. Yamamoto fights his way back with a chop on Higgerson. There's a tag on the soul man. Johnson high over that top rope. time uh, the nine minute mark in this bout it's a one fall 60 minute time limit bout Fargo and Jerry the King Lawler have taken turns and exchanging some really vicious licks out there Lawler having a count of one and a half laid on him now a count of two is the referee trying to get him off the ropes and off of Fargo's throat Corner pushes the referee back and continues to pound the fabulous one. Jackie, with that great determination of his, absolutely won't let. Oh, he nailed referee Dave Ferguson. And he does the same thing to Lawler as he picks him up. Goes for that atomic drop. Drops him on that knee. Count up. Nothing as the referee. disqualification 
Here goes Dave Ferguson in the ring. This is going to be quite a shock. Jackie now getting the first realization that he has been disqualified by Dave Ferguson. And Jackie's saying, what about Jerry Calhoun's count? Fargo will not accept the disqualification verdict. He says, how about Calhoun? He counted him out. <laughs> the time on the bout was six, 10 minutes, 11 seconds was the official time on the bout. Oh, then Dennis Condry, Rocky Johnson, and then Phil Higgerson. We are down to Lawler and Dundee. Ooh. Higgerson, who should be on his way back to the dressing room, reached up. Tripped Dundee, and Lawler just came off that top rope and throttled. He couldn't get the three count. The powerful little Australian kicked him loose at the count of two. That looked like sure three count, but Dundee was having no part of it. Lawler and Dundee, the remaining representatives of the two teams. Dundee on top of Lawler away with that right hand. And referee Jerry Calhoun in this no time limit, no disqualification match can only do his best to try to get him apart. And Lawler appeared to grab a chain. Here comes Jackie Fargo in. Then Dennis Condry, Rocky Johnson, and then Phil Higgerson. We are down to Lawler and Dundee. Ooh. Higgerson, who should be on his way back to the dressing room, reached up. Tripped Dundee, and Lawler just came off that top rope and throttled. He couldn't get the three count. The powerful little Australian kicked him loose at the count of two. That looked like sure three count, but Dundee was having no part of it. Lawler and Dundee, the remaining representatives of the two teams. Dundee on top of Lawler, pounding away with that right hand. Referee Jerry Calhoun in this no time limit, no disqualification match can only do his best to try to get him apart. And Lawler appeared to grab a chain. Here comes Jackie Fargo in. Thank you. 
at him with that ring he's got on his hand and split Lawler open, but good. Things going pretty well his way. He has wrist bleeding profusely from around the right eye and the head. Ooh, he clipped him. Looked like he may have split his bottom lip. Tommy Rich takes another big right from Lawler. Referee Dave Ferguson warning him. And the youngster wobbling around the ring as Lawler really has him in serious trouble. He measures him and throttles him. Blisters Rich. And Lawler bangs away at him. Shakes his fist at Jackie Fargo. Reminding Fargo of the night that Lawler cracked the ribs of Fargo and put him in the hospital. Lawler, all the confidence in the world, as he always has, becoming obnoxious with it as he taunts Jackie Fargo and continues to slam Tommy Rich around the ring. Rich. We passed the nine minute mark. Or make that the 12 minute mark. And Tommy Rich in serious trouble. He's bleeding very heavily. Almost goes out between the ropes. Lawler gives him a hand, pushes him down. The referee starts a count on him. As Rich is outside the ropes, Rich down on the floor. Tommy was very long on courage. On the floor, breathing heavily. The referee starts a count only because of the conversation of Lawler. It may have helped Tommy Rich to another six, five or six seconds outside the ring. Rich may not make it back in. The referee Walks over, but Lawler comes in behind him and clips Rich down on the ring, on the floor. Rich bounced very hard on the concrete. Mm. Lawler takes Rich inside the ring with a suplex and really splatted him all over. Fargo, up out of his seat, came to the step. And Lawler came up off of Rich. That may have saved Tommy Rich from a three count. Ooh. Down goes Rich again. Tommy picked up by Lawler, whipped into the rope, the big elbow, and Rich goes down. There's another. Lawler comes up off of Rich as Jackie Fargo came to the ring apron. Referee Dave Ferguson warning him. Lawler technically has not interfered with a match, although in the truest sense, he's distracted Lawler in two occasions from pinning Tommy Rich. A big body slam, and Lawler goes for a cover. Not even a one count, 
when Lawler comes up as Jackie Fargo leaves his seat. Ooh, Rich is a mess. Lawler pounding on him, picks him up, suplex, takes him over and down. Goes for the cover, here comes Fargo, and once again, Lawler comes up, hollers out at Fargo, come on in the ring. Lawler hollering at Fargo to come in the ring and stop all the horsing around that he's ready for him. Referee Dave Ferguson trying to get Jackie Fargo back in his seat. Jackie had a ticket stub for the first row. Tommy Rich catches Lawler from behind, rolls him into a jet gun. Tommy Rich has upset Jerry Lawler for the NWA Southern Heavyweight Championship. Fargo jerks Rich out of the ring. Three count, and Rich is the new Southern heavyweight champion. Jackie Fargo laughing at Jerry Lawler. As Fargo helped Rich out of the ring, and Tommy Rich in very bad shape. Though the possessor of the Southern heavyweight title, Lawler having a fit in the center of the ring, Trying to get Fargo back in the ring as Fargo holds the hand of Tommy Rich up. And Rich with a Southern heavyweight title, an incredible turn of events. As Tommy Rich being helped back to the dressing room by the referee and Fargo, and Lawler is absolutely beside himself. The King who is known for his mental agility in the ring has been outsmarted and he loses the Southern Heavyweight title. She unwound, well, I'll tell you what, like a completely tight, tight spring that has just been triggered, Jackie Fargo on top of Jerry Lawler in a dogfight match with no referee. As a result of what Lawler thought was the cause of the loss of his Southern heavyweight crown, he insisted on this match with Lawler and early, right away, Lawler head leading and Fargo right back at him, catches him with a good right. Nails him on the button that time, sends him back, and Lawler staggering around the ring, goes down in the center. This is a dogfight match to the finish. Jackie Fargo taunting Lawler to come out. Jerry Lawler busted once again, and Jackie Fargo hurt his fist on that one, but I'm sure that it is one of those things that is sweet pain because he has been after some Jerry Lawler for quite some time. He remembers the agony that he felt himself when Lawler put him up with broken ribs for a matter of months. Oh, he caught him a dandy. Another one in Lawler's head. Just flopping loosely back off the ropes. Jackie goes to the midsection with him. Working on the cut, but Lawler catches him coming in. This is when Lawler is as dangerous as he ever will be. When he's hurt, back after Fargo. Nails him again. Lawler and Fargo trading licks. Jackie puts him into the ropes. The fabulous one with Lawler sloped down on the bottom rope. Fargo goes right after him. 
Ryan. Jerry Lawler. Ooh. Fargo. Unleashing all of the fury that's been pent up from the months thinking about this bragging Jerry Lawler who has called Jackie Fargo over the hill, who has promised to put Fargo into retirement. It's all coming out tonight as Jackie really going to work on Lawler, but Lawler with that tremendous staying power of his puts Fargo down for the first time. to get down to it. Marlar leads with two lefts. Ooh. Jackie pounds with that right hand now. Nails Lawler in the cut. Once again, he has Lawler slumped back on the ropes. There is no referee, a dogfight match, a challenge by Lawler, an acceptance by Fargo, and here we are. A jam-packed capacity crowd of 11,000 people. Lawler doubled up on the canvas, stomped on by Jackie Fargo. We're still within the first five minutes of the match. And both wrestlers hurt. But Lawler put back down on the canvas. And Jackie Fargo moves on top of him. Ooh, Lawler with a wicked cut. Comes back. Zeroes in on Fargo, and Jackie comes back. I guess you wouldn't have expected anything less out of these two competitors. Waller slumps to the bottom rope. Lawler, weak in the corner, falls flat on his face, and Fargo towers over him. And there's the famous Fargo strut, the fabulous one, showing this packed house that he still has a little bit left. fire. Lawler from the corner, the ball of fire came rolling out. The bell has sounded. And Jackie Fargo on the far side of the ring as a athletic commission representative. Stopped it. Lawler above us, bleeding and hurt. Fargo comes back to his feet. Ooh, and once again, the ball of fire comes out, and the ring is full of help. At six minutes past. The beginning of this match. Jerry Lawler. And when you look back at this film, you'll see it. Lawler goes after Fargo down, and they're trying to get him back off. Fargo. Trying to protect. Randy Fargo in trying to help. 
his cousin Jackie. Fargo despite the action by Lawler still battling his way back up and they're trying to get him out of there now Lawler slumped down in the corner and the bout has been stopped there is no winner. Lawler went after Fargo, but he hit Dave Ferguson, a referee who was in trying to help Randy Fargo. Going after Lawler to try to get him out of there. Fargo roll out of the ring down to the concrete floor. Jackie crimson on his chest. for a packed house at the Coliseum. What is billed as a dogfight without a referee turned exactly into that. As two battlers who took on the appearance of mad dogs went at each other till finally Lawler sent the blazing balls of fire at the direction of Fargo. And the bout was stopped. that point. This is Lance Russell from the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. Heavyweight championship match, a one-fall 60-minute bout. The challenger, the fabulous Jackie Far Fargo, holder of many, many titles himself, going against the brash young current champion, Jerry the King Lawler. Referee is Dave Ferguson. Fargo comes out extremely aggressively. Lawler, of course, 26 years of age, and one of the great things on his side is that tremendous staying power that Lawler has. We've seen them all. Lawler under attack from Fargo. A rapid series of rights and lefts, a big drag to the center of the ring. The fabulous one who has eaten many insults from the king referred to as being over the hill and every other kind of name you can lay to it. Lawler has put it on Fargo and Fargo has come back to show Lawler in this ring that he can still get in there and go with the best of them. In the most recent previous meeting, Fargo should have convinced Lawler exactly of that. Jackie looks like he has a cut opened up in his mouth. Lawler may have opened up a cut on the inside of his mouth in the very early first 60 seconds of the bout. A one fall 60 minute title match. Lawler's Southern heavyweight crown on the line. Referee Dave Ferguson starts a 10 count on Lawler. It'll take more than that to put him out of the way. But that's Fargo's way of letting him know he's back and ready to stay. Jackie approaches the corner, kicked by Lawler. Lawler right after. Ooh. Lawler nails him hard in there. Fargo has been cut on the inside of his mouth. Jackie rips. 
a right of his own. Oh, oh. a beauty. Lower out at the ringside as the referee starts the 10 count. At the count of eight, Lawler is back to the ring apron, steps inside, breaks the count, and steps back outside. Count of five, once again, Lawler on the ring apron. Jackie Fargo moves with caution. A bob and a weave, Lawler in the corner, ready to box with him. Referee Dave Ferguson trying to restore it to a wrestling match. Best of luck, Dave. Fargo, if his mouth is uh, cut to any extent on the inside, could have problems with his breathing as the bout goes along. In the corner, woo, and Fargo goes to work on Lawler's eye. forget sometimes that Fargo has forgotten more about dirty wrestling than Lawler will ever learn. Back when the fabulous team of Jackie and Donnie Fargo were the scourges of the nation, holders of the world tag title, dominating record crowds in New York and in Boston. That was Jackie's style. Lawler wraps him heavy with a big right hand. Puts him down with the elbow, but Fargo bounces right back up again. There's the first time call. Five minutes past, 55 to go. Fargo, a whip, catches Lawler coming off the rope. Fargo slips around, waits for the opportunity, nails him with a big right hand. Jackie Fargo at the moment. Has Lawler down on the canvas, picks him up, misses a right hand. Pleaser, the fabulous one, goes into that Fargo strut. Lawler cautiously out of the corner. Referee Dave Ferguson warning Lawler about hanging on the ropes in there. Fargo can't get him out of the corner. And finally, the referee does. We're past the five-minute mark with 55 minutes to go. Lawler misses the big elbow, shoots a left that misses. And Fargo taunting Lawler Trying to make him lose his cool. We've seen within the last couple of months, Jerry Lawler go full 60 minutes with the World Heavyweight Champion, Terry Funk, to a 60-minute draw. He has enormous staying power. Jackie Fargo trying to use all the savvy and ring knowledge that he has. The whip and Fargo with a vulnerable knee goes into the turnbuckle and Lawler drops straight down on him. Referee Dave Ferguson gets a two count on him and Lawler breaks it. Ooh. Lawler hit him with a right, jams him with a left. 
out. Fargo missed that one, ducked back, causing Lawler to miss it, rather. With a hand in the hair, the referee starts a count. Lawler doesn't need but a two count to send a right and a left stinging home on Fargo. Woohoo, yeah! And Jackie Fargo. Lawler and Fargo swinging at each other wildly. And there goes referee Dave Ferguson. Jackie tried to stop himself. But as he hit those ropes and was catapulted across, there goes Lawler into the ropes. Shoulder butt and Fargo is down. There's a cover. Referee Dave Ferguson, one, two. Fargo kicks him off. Right at the count of three. And the hand of Jackie Fargo is raised. Hold it. Dave Ferguson, the referee, who was jolted by Fargo, raises the hand. Jerry Lawler stunned. There's one that we're going to have to go back and look at the films because as I saw it, it was a Lawler pin and he didn't quite get it because Fargo kicked him out at the count of three. But the referee who was addled raised the hand of Fargo and hands him the Southern heavyweight belt. And Jerry Lawler is incensed. of a tag, a, a count rather, on Fargo, but with a referee dazed, he raised the hand of Fargo and gives Fargo the belt. From the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum, this is Lance Russell. If you think I'm going to go in the ring here and wrestle, with this big muscle-bound clown sitting right here behind me, you got another thing coming. He's now, he's already interfered in one of my matches, and I'm not going to give him the opportunity to do it again. He is not going to do anything, Jerry. He's just simply sitting here. I ask him to come and watch the match, to watch you uh, to wrestle in there, and uh, that's all that I want him to do is just well, sit down here with me. Well, I don't want him to do that. Well, it's not so going to So I hurt tell you, well... No, maybe it's not going to hurt anything because I'm not going to let it hurt anything. Now, there's either there's only one way you can have a match here today, and that's if he goes back to the dressing room. Is what what is your what is your uh, aim in life, son? You want to be a wrestler? Is that is that what uh, that's you're what trying? I'm, to... That's what it's all about, bud. I want to wrestle. I want to like to wrestle you. Anybody I can get a match with. <laughs> it's not so been funny, man. Is somebody to wrestle a guy. We got the license finally, where he is a, can be a professional. Well, this is not the way to go about it. You're going about it all wrong. See. You don't come out here on TV every week and try to be a big, a big star in front of in everybody's eyes when you don't know a hammerlock from a headlock. You don't come out here. You're going about it all wrong. What you do first is learn to wrestle. You don't know how much he knows. He knows how to play football. He knows how to wrestle. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, okay. <laughs> Come on, let's I get got in a, there. I got a few minutes. I'm not going to be wrestling anyway. Well, tell me exactly him. what the man knows. Uh, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something I know about him. I know I sat out here in the, in the uh, lobby the other day, and I watched him come out here on television and tell all of these people here. He said, uh, I want to get this right now. He said, uh, tell me if this is right. Football is my first love. That's what Mike Stark said. Football is my first love. But I got my knees messed up playing football. He got his knees hurt playing football. So now he thinks he'll wrestle. <laughs> is, is, that what, is that what's going through your mind, Mike Stark? Hey, man, I can wrestle you anytime, any place. I'm not scared of wrestle, I'll wrestle Jerry, you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute now, wait a minute. <laughs> no, Wait just a minute. Yeah, I'll wrestle right now. You can no, you no. can wrestle, but you can't play football. Is that what you're trying to tell me? In other words, I said I hurt in my other knee. words, I said I hurt my knees 
playing football. They're fine now. I can squat 700 pounds, buddy. No, what you're trying to tell me is your knees are too fragile to play football, but you hey, think I'll you can wrestle. Right now, buddy. No, come on. Hey, all right, let's, okay. let's, hey. I'll tell you what. You got a wrestling license? Come on, let's jump in the ring, but you know you got to have a wrestling license. Just hold it up. You got a wrestling no. license? I'm right here, buddy. I'll throw it out right here in front of your eyes. I'll, I'll no. turn you in and I'll wrestle you right now. You ain't got nothing but an application there, son. Wait a minute. I don't, I do not, I do not want any, any confrontation on the thing, and we've got to get on with it. Mike, I'm... Now, Mike, really, your knees, son, they're too fragile for hey, football. Hey, don't worry about my knees, so, Mike. Your knees can get hurt in wrestling, too. So just, uh, you know, hobble okay. on off okay. somewhere and okay. forget Good about wrestling. You shut your really? Mouth. Okay. Just forget about Why wrestling. You shut your big mouth. Now, either get him hey, out of here. It won't be okay. no match today. Mike, let me ask you, if you would, just, I, I hate to ask you to do this, but come back and maybe in, a, in the next match or something like that, OK? Well, I, well, I, I just don't want any confrontation. OK. Hey, come on, Waller. Now, knock that stuff off. Give me a pot pick. Hey, come on. Can we get somebody in here to help him? Your knees can get hurt in wrestling, too, brother. Yeah, you have to hit him with Get a camera on the board. Come on, Waller. Can we get somebody in here that can help him? What do you now, think about that big shot wrestler now, huh? Yeah. How's your knees, son? Drag that hunk of meat on out of here. That's, a, that's another lousy thing you pull off. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that's funny. Ain't that funny? That is really hilarious. Now, this program is called Wrestling, son. Get some wrestlers out here. Right, why don't you get up there and leave the chair on the floor? Baby. This match will be a one-fall, 10-minute time limit event. One fall only, 10 minutes the overall time limit. Introducing, first of all, from Portland, Oregon, 228 pounds, Don Anderson. Going against him in this match from Memphis, Tennessee. The world's heavyweight champion. 229 pounds, Jerry Lawler. This match, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Marvelous champion. I will tell you that for a flat fact. You ready for it? Bell time. Lawler going against Don Anderson. Uh, mm, that Lawler, I'll tell you. He, I mean, it's just stuff like that that there is no way in the world that you can like the guy. He just he pulls stuff off like that. Davey, how about you? Take All right, let's see what Don Anderson can do with him in here. Don Anderson. Hey, he unloads on him. Crowd loves it. with a head scissors on Don Anderson now. Anderson pops right out of it, on his feet. Stalking Jerry Lawler. Lawler on the mat. Don Anderson, a little handstand, comes down with a knee right against that shoulder. Back into the ropes. Lawler with the right fist. Another one. Anderson, what a move he put on him there. And Lawler backs into a corner. Anderson slowly going into the corner after him. Cautious. And you better be cautious with a guy like Lawler. Lawler putting the heat on the left arm now. Really working on the shoulder. It's Don Anderson. One knee on the mat. We passed the two-minute mark. Anderson back on his feet now. Jerry Lawler maintains a hold, but Anderson drops to the mat and pulls out of it.
All our claims in is tights pulled. Don Anderson and the crowd, of course, deny it to referee Jerry Calhoun. Back in the corner, Lawler. Don Anderson has him there. Drag across the ring. He bounces Lawler into the other corner. Don Anderson now back in the corner. He's choking him. Referee Jerry Calhoun in there trying to get him to break the chokehold. Right fist. Waller's got it doubled up. He pops Anderson, knocked him right through the ropes. Down onto the floor. Waller again with a fist. And again. Don Anderson rolls back into the ring. Look out, Mike Stark from outside. Look out, a Coke bottle. He just busted it over all his head. Stark hit my roller with a chair before this match started. He banged his knee with a chair. And Stark comes in here with a, with a soft drink bottle. And he bounced that thing right off Lawler's head. Glass went everywhere. Ooh, watch that glass, yeah. It's the match has been stopped by the referee. Just short of four minutes. Lawler cut by that bottle. Help him out. Three fifty-eight. The time the referee stopped it. Uh, okay. Well, we have uh, we got to do some repair work in here. I'm sorry. Uh, we got out of hand on it. Uh, we we uh, we're gonna take time out now. We'll be back in just a minute. Waller. While the referee was out tying up the rope, Waller and undone. From out of nowhere, pulls out something, a packet of powder or something, throws it in Stark's eyes. Stark down on the canvas. Lawler, just at the count of three, breaks on a chokehold, and he has the big mule in trouble. Mike Stark gets the center of the canvas in there. As Lawler has him blinded, Stark can't see him. And Lawler goes to work on him. from behind. As the referee warns him to get away. Mike. Caught with his eyes. Filled with some kind of substance. Rushes Lawler to the corner. Oh, he really nailed him. Hit him with that big ball arm. Stark whips him across the ring. In the bear hug. Holds him up. Waller being put under tremendous pressure from Mike Stark. Gorgeous George from outside of the ring comes flying off the top rope. Nails Stark from behind. It'll be a disqualification on Lawler for interference. Here comes Rocky Johnson. Johnson taking care of Lawler, and now the big fella is back to his feet. Mike Stark slashes Gorgeous George, and Rocky Johnson puts Lawler down. There's the hand in the air. And Mike Stark with the biggest win of his young career as Lawler and Gorgeous George nursing their bruises 
head to the locker room. The winner, Mike Stark, by disqualification over Jerry Lawler and a great assist from Rocky. I, I do, in fact, have one wish, and, it, and if I could have one wish that would come true, uh, I know exactly. Okay, thank you very much there, Davey. We're going to be back in just a little bit with some more. All right, really good. Knows. Hold it up here now. I got uh, something here we I go. want to say to you. Wait Put a minute, that Lawler. microphone over here. Now, wait a minute. Don't give me any of that stuff, Banana hey. Nose. I want that microphone over here because I got something to say. Well, wait a minute, All Lawler. All you people have been, now listen, I have listened to you tell these lies about me and all of these things, and I'm not going to stand for Don't give me any of that stuff, Banana hey. Nose. I want that microphone over here because I got something to say. Well, wait a minute, All you Lawler. people have been, now listen, I have listened to you tell these lies about me and all of these things, and I'm not going to stand for it. You and I... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's my wish. And one of these days, well, we told you we we're going to have, um, we we're going to have some fun today on our special uh, Christmas wrestling show, and we took the liberty of moving over to the living room uh, where we could sit and share with you uh, some of the moments of Christmas that we hope maybe you're going to enjoy in, in this special. Uh, in addition to the fun that we're going to have throughout the program, uh, as Dave and I mentioned earlier, you're going to have an opportunity to see some of the wrestlers uh, away from the ring in their homes. Uh, Very much, Tojo. And I think I can safely speak for all the fans around this area, Tojo. Uh, they wish you a Merry Christmas, too. Tojo Yamamoto and his thoughts of Christmas. You know, uh, it might surprise you what some uh, of the guys that you see in there involved in professional wrestling uh, think about comes Christmas time. As a matter of fact, some of them even think about uh, Santa Claus. And they do more than think about Santa Claus, as a matter of fact. Uh, I think you would be surprised to know about Jerry Lawler. You're next, young man. Uh, Santa, I'm a little bit embarrassed about being here. I gotta tell you, this is kind of a last resort. So, you know, if you wouldn't tell anybody that I, that I came by, you know, uh, I, it, it's something special that I want for Christmas. I've tried just about every way to get it. You see, there's this crown that I've just gotta have. See? <laughs> you better be good. All right. Now, we saw Jerry and Santa Claus in there. I'm going to get him in here right now because I uh, have been looking forward to the special Christmas show so that we can get Jerry Lawler in. You don't have to get up, Lance. Just keep your seat. I really didn't have any intention of getting up. I just wanted you to come in here. And uh, I want you to take the opportunity, Jerry, enough of this stuff, and say Merry Christmas to everybody out here. That's what I want. Just That's what you brought me out here for? Yeah, this well, is a I can Christmas leave them special. Because I'm not here to wish anybody a Merry Christmas. I don't have anything to be merry about. You saw me ask for my crown. I still don't have my crown. I got a crown and a belt to get back. Okay. And I'm here today to wrestle. You don't have a ring set up. I'm looking. Hey, this for... is. Hey, listen. That's enough. That's enough. I, I want got you a to whole say army Merry of Christmas. wrestlers outside and a. And oh well, a bus why don't you go out and join them right now? We got a Christmas special going. Well, so I'll you tell just... you what. You better get this ring set up around here. You realize why what don't time you it get is? Some it's getting late. The people on want too, to see wrestling show in there. All right, that's enough of it. Go well, get, get the some... ring set up. I mean you, it. You get. Rick Gibson, of course, uh, I think most all of you know Robert, uh, the younger brother who has just started into professional wrestling and. And Rip, uh, Rick wanting to wish everybody a Merry Christmas uh, on this particular special occasion. And I know that all of you want to wish it back again. Uh, speaking of wishing Merry Christmas, right. Jerry is here to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. No, we that's not it. what I'm here to do. I'm here to see if you start putting up the ring yet. Now, I went out and changed my uniform, and I put on some, as you say, decent clothes for a Christmas special. I asked now, you to I'm wish people a Merry Christmas. Christmas. That's all I wanted you to do. Hey, uh, yeah, other I see guys all these other turkeys out here wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. I don't know what they're so happy about. Don't they know I'm breathing right down their necks? I'm right behind them. Hey, Every now, one of them. All I'm right, that's them. enough and of that. Out here, Merry Christmas, Christmas show. That's all. We wanted Jen and to wish a Merry Christmas, so if you don't mind, just uh, let us continue in here and and uh, we'll worry about I'm going to give you one more show. chance to have that ring up. Okay, in a that's minutes. enough, Jerry. All right. Now, Get the we'll, ring. We, all right. We'll worry about <laughs> Come on, Jackie. Is that really the Christmas spirit now? What is that? <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, even despite our problems that we've had today on Christmas Day with with uh, trying to get uh, the king to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Uh, 
I understand that at least he does think about Santa Claus. As a matter of fact, he does more than just think about Santa Claus. He actually sits down and takes pen in hand sometimes. Well, it's Christmas time again. Here I am writing to you. I've been a good boy all year long. Yeah. Well, anyway, what I want this Christmas is a really good wrestling partner. Somebody really strong, big, mean, and tough. Somebody really unbeatable. Thanks a lot, King. came through for me again, my man. Let's see what I got here. Whoa, wait a minute! No, wait, wait, Santa, this is not what I had in mind. Wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> in, case, in case you were having some problems there, the one without the pants was the gorilla. That's the identification you needed on that. Well, uh, it's real funny, Russell, but we got to get down to oh, business now. now. Come on, what are the ring ropes in here? Now, I told you, I have been trying to Where's get you to simply say Merry Christmas to the people, and you give me this ring and set the ring. This is a Christmas here, special. This is a wrestling show, right? This is a We're Christmas here. I'm wrestling gonna put up special, the ring. and I'm I want a Merry Christmas from Jerry Lawler out there. Now, come on, Jerry. We've been hearing all of this stuff, and I just simply want you to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I simply want to put up the wrestling ring. Now. We've got to have a ring if we're going to have wrestling here. Well, if I told these people Merry Christmas, would that make you happy? Then could uh, I put up the ring? Okay, I'll tell you what. You say the Merry Christmas, and then we'll talk about it, because I don't want any of these Lawler tricks in there. Just a Merry Christmas to the people out there, would you please? Merry Christmas, you rednecks. Uh, now, where did I put the ring? Will you get out of here with that stuff now? I'm gonna... That's the same kind of attitude you've had all along. And I got to tell you one thing, that the guy that said, I never met a man, never met a man I didn't like, he never met Jerry Lawler, I'll tell you for a fact. There's just no way to get along with this guy. Uh... Yeah, that was uh, really a shocker, I want to tell you, because as the, as the action got hotter and hotter and hotter, uh, Lawler got farther and farther away from the ring, and the Mongolian stompers in there, man, and Rocky Johnson is just absolutely waylaying this guy. And uh, Lawler is saying, you go get him, you go get him. Hey, I tell the truth. That's exactly what happened, and he turned around, brother, and you may have thought he was your friend or whatever, but uh, there wasn't anything friendly about that. He didn't appreciate you not taking that tag. No, you know what he turned out to be? A dirty, low-down, snake-in-the-grass coward. Just like I knew he was, a 14-carat coward. He couldn't hold up his end of the tag team, and he realized it. He was so jealous of what I was doing in that ring, the way I was outshining him, the way I went in there and handled Johnson and Fargo single-handedly. He realized that he couldn't do it, and he was so jealous that just like a snake and just like a rat, he turned on me. Yeah, he turned on you all. Right. He's a deserter. He's a traitor. The lowest thing in the army is a traitor, right? You know what they do to traitors, don't you? Yeah, they know. shoot them down like rats. Well, let me tell you something, Stomper. You can consider yourself shot down because Monday night when I get in that ring, you're going to think these fists are guns because I'm going to put them upside your head so fast and so hard you're not going to know where you're at, brother. And you're going to regret the day that you ever turned on the king. Believe me. And I saw Rocky Johnson and I saw Jackie Fargo come in behind you there. They were willing to come to your aid so quickly. 
because they're looking for any kind of ally, any kind of friend that they can put their hand on, anybody that can help them in their war with the king. Because I got news for you. I'm going to come out on top. I'm going to be victorious, whether it's against Johnson, whether it's against these jerk Indians, whether it's against Fargo, or whether it's against you, Stomper. Because I'm number one. I am the king. I am the greatest. And there ain't nobody around here that can do anything about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to regret the day that you ever turned on the king. We listen. I'm so glad it's you that he's mad at and not me. Because well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you just one thing, and you mull it around in your redneck brains out there and see if it don't make sense. If he's so mad at me, why ain't he here today? Why does he have to send in a little piece of film to show to all you rednecks instead of coming here and facing me like a man? I'm here. He knew I was going to be here, but he's not here, is he? No, he'll be here Monday night. Oh, he'll be here Monday yeah. night, but I'm here now, and I'll be here Monday night, and I'll always be here. Don't ever doubt that, because I am the king. Like I said, after Monday night, after Monday night, there won't be any more stomper to contend with. There won't be anybody else for Johnson to have to go through. It's just going to be me. Just the king is all that's going to be left. Well, the Mongolian stomper will indeed be here, and that's one that... Uh, I don't think you realize I got my army together now, Lance. I can't be beat with my army behind me. Do you do you realize what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, and Pod, now I believe if I were you, I'd bring every one of them with you, including uh, your spooky friend. I'm going to have everybody I got in my army with me. They go everywhere I go. He's not black, he's yellow, he's a coward, he's a gutless wonder, and when we get in that ring, he knows he's going to lose that belt, because I got your number, Johnson. I want you to realize that. You're low down, you're a backfighter, you're a coward, you're low, man, that's all you are, you're just low bred, and I'm going to stomp you, I'm going to make an example out of you, Johnson. Uh, here comes hey, Rocky Johnson. Him. Come on, start out, though. Could you start say... Say something about him now that he's here. Let me tell you something, sir. Rocky Johnson. You're always running your mouth off. You're out here shooting your mouth off. But you never seen the day that you could beat me, and I'm not scared of you one bit, Lolly. Wait, gentlemen, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't, we don't. Let me ask you. I got you up there. Let me ask you something. We, we don't need it. We don't want any trouble here now, gentlemen. Anytime you want a piece of me, anytime you want a piece of me in that belt, you can get it. Anytime, because you remember, I'm the one that beat you like a dog for it. Are you brother, yet, motor mouth? Are you I can yet? get you again. Okay. I can back my motor mouth. We don't, we don't want any trouble here. If he's through, if I can have a word with you, just a minute. He's so brave, and he's so tough, and he's whipped me so many times. Let me make a little proposition to you, Johnson. We don't have to wait. I know the match is already booked, but we don't have to wait. If there's a ring right there, and it's empty, brother. We can have the match right now. You want to put that belt up? You say you want to get it on now? Yeah. Right well, now. then, hey. Get your carcass in here, brother, like you got something. We, we, wait a minute now. We, we, can't just, we can't just make matches here. Could we, see, here's the thing. We could have the match in an arena where 10,000 or so people could see it, but I want to whip your brains out right here in front of everybody, brother, where 330,000 people can see you get put down, because that's what I'm going to do to you. Get in the ring! I said this before, Clay, but if they ever have a look-alike contest for Muhammad Ali, I think Rocky would win it. As Rocky Johnson, right above our cameras here, into the ropes, elbow to the throat of Rocky Johnson. Five minutes are gone now, five minutes. The referee trying to count him off and calling for a clean break.
Uh, let me brief you on what just happened. Well, let me say this. Bring Lawler back out here five minutes because there ain't no way in the world that Lawler can beat me. You see what he used? He had to use a chain. So bring him back out here. Look at my jaw. But let me tell you something. It takes a lot more than that, brother, to beat this cat. So you bring that job, Turkey, out five more minutes. Five more minutes. Five, five more minutes. Let me tell you something, Lawler. Well, let me tell you something. I got something. Let me tell you something, Big Moth. I got something that still be as long to you, Jack, because I still got that crown. I'll go get the crown right now, and we get back in there for the belt and the crown. If you can whip me, you can have them both. But I know you can't whip me, so I'll go get the crown, and we get back in and get funky. Hey, five, just give me five more minutes. I'll go out to my car, and I'll get the crown. And we'll, and we'll get it right in there. Five, belt against the crown. Rocky Johnson, Gary Lawler, and, uh, well, I don't know exactly what's going on here. Ladies and Rocket. gentlemen, you just saw a classic example of the biggest sucker in town, didn't you? He said it ain't no way Lala can beat me. Sure, Johnson, that's why I'm standing here, the new Southern heavyweight champion. Just the way it's always been, brother. It's always been my belt. It's still my belt. Now, you know what he's gonna do, Clay? He wants to wrestle me again and go get to put up my crown. Well, it's my crown. It's always been my crown. Hey, set him up here, brother. You heard what the man, I ain't gonna call him a man, you heard what the turkey said. This crown against that belt, right? I believe that's what he said, yeah. It ain't what you believe, you heard what the man said, didn't you? Already. All right. All right, they're gonna go the crown against the belt. Rocky Johnson and Jerry Lawler in the ring again in uh, quite unusual circumstances. Lawler and uh, was supposed to wrestle Gorgeous George Jr., but uh, he and uh, Johnson had a special grudge match. Lawler won it in five minutes, and now they're in the ring again. And now it looks like a free-for-all, as we have uh, Bill Hickerson, Dennis Condry. Bill Hickerson, Dennis Condry in the ring, helping Law holding it while Lawler goes against Rocky Johnson. trying to get some kind of order here. Bill Hickerson and Dennis Condry holding on to Rocky Johnson while Lawler uh, has a leather strap there. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Now Bill Dundee and, and Tommy Rich come in. Bill Dundee and Tommy Rich come in and try to get everybody out. Now Lawler comes over and grabs the crown and the belt. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, ugly and uglier just arrived. Mm. Now, what, why do you want to come out? I knew you couldn't stand it. I had a coming back here was the fact that I knew I was going to have to listen to that mouth that hadn't gotten any smaller. Since yeah, tell that to all those show. rednecks out there because I know better, but it is good to see that nose yeah. It's okay with everybody, right? I checked. The promoter said if Paul Orndorff is the one to decide that he uh, just finished a six-minute, ten-second match, and Paul says it's okay, bring him on. Okay. Then uh, we have... Uh, Get the camera on me, idiot. Now let me show all you rednecks out there what wrestling is all about. I'm going to show you how long it takes to beat somebody when somebody's really trying to beat them, so you just keep your eyes glued on this. Yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes glued on it, so uh, a kind of a special match. You can scratch Jimmy Gibbons in there, and bell time. Here we go. Jerry Lawler in there with Paul Orndorff, and you can see that Orndorff, he's the kind of guy, he likes to, he likes to wrestle clean. He likes to, to wrestle as a scientific wrestler. The only thing that I question about Paul, he is young, Lawler with a lot of experience. Paul is very strong. He just finished a match. Lawler takes him out and over the shoulder and down. There's that big knee drop right across the uh, what appeared to be the throat to me. Kind of one. And Orndorff kicks his way out. Lawler thought he had himself a less than a one-minute win over Paul Orndorff. And uh, 
Paul saying something to referee Paul Morton. Orndorff circling him. He wasn't the least bit afraid to climb right in there with Lawler. I'm not certain of the wisdom of doing it. But uh, Lawler back on the ropes. The referee calls for a clean break, and he gets one. Don't tell me you're complaining about that little tap as he pushed himself away, Lawler. Standing side headlock. He takes Orndorff over, but into a conversion to a head scissors for Orndorff. Mr. Lawler not doing too well as a teacher. He was going to teach Orndorff a lesson as to what would happen when somebody wanna, wants to beat him in there. And uh, instead of trying to put on a show and impress the girls, as Lawler put it, Orndorff showing him, while he prefers scientific wrestling, he can, uh, he can dish it out just the way that Lawler needs it. Jerry Lawler, though, has tremendous stamina. We've said that a thousand times, but it's true. He has, he has great durability. And Orndorff, did you see him pick him up? Right straight up off the floor, Clay. He, or, uh, Lawler molding about his tights. You could see it right there at home. A beautiful move and a display of strength that this Orndorff has. Look at Lawler, that <laughs> on his back. Oh, yeah. Paul rolls him down to the canvas, but the ring catches him. And it calls for a break, and break he does. Lawler consulting with his ringside attendant, Mickey Poole. He's probably saying, get the car warmed up. This guy's tougher than I thought. Paul Orndorff. Staying in, you notice that crouch. Orndorff stays low, ready to move. Lawler now drops on him with that elbow and upper arm. Mm. Hammers Orndorff down to the deck. Coming back hard. If Paul can just stay away from a mistake that many young wrestlers make, and that is thinking that he's got Lawler and leaving himself wide open. And on the break, Lawler taps him and Orndorff right back. Out of or Orndorff has been breaking clean. Lawler couldn't seem way clear to doing that. And he pounds Lawler right back after Lawler had hit him on the ropes. Paul Orndorff on the left, Jerry Lawler on the right. Paul Morton, the referee. Lawler a little cautious. He has a perplexed look on his face, too. I think he thought because of uh, the inexperience of Orndorff that it was going to be a snap. Oh, man, oh, man. Now, there's a typical Lawlerism. Lawler slams him into that turnbuckle. Nails him hard with a right hand, the referee warning him about the fist. Oh, man, oh, man. Almost put him out. He wheeled him into the ropes. And he caught, caught Orndorff coming off with that foot. Paul in deep trouble now, deep trouble. Lawler goes to the ropes, typical Lawler fashion. Orndorff manages to get out of the way. Blows him up, one, two, three, he got him! How about that? Jerry Lawler, count of three, no sir Lawler, a count of three. Jerry Lawler furious in there as Paul Orndorff was, come on Lawler. Orndorff was in trouble. Lawler picks him up. Pile drives him in there. All right, now that's enough of that. Come on, Paul, get him separated in there. Lawler, come on, Lawler. Nails Paul Orndorff after a pile driver. And Lawler goes right at him with that chair. Get him, come on. Get somebody out here. Yeah. Here comes Ron Fuller out here. 
get rid of this guy.